All right, good afternoon, everybody. Jesse Montano back here for another Mail Bag Abs NHL Stanley Cup Final. We're getting into all of it, uh, having a lot of fun, and we're getting closer and closer to draft and free agency. So I know those questions are coming in. We got more, uh, you know, news and tidbits on the Jonathan Druin situation. So a lot to unpack. Let's get into your guys' questions from this week. Thoughts on additions and subtractions on the defensive end. Talking about Jack Johnson, Sean Walker. Look, let's talk about the subtractions because we're not quite sure what they're adding. Uh, you know, with what uh, the additions will be to the back end. I've said it before the last couple of weeks. My hunch, uh, my my expectation is that Sam Malinsky will be one of those guys uh, filling in there on the D side. But I think Sam Malinsky comes in and fills in for Sean Walker. I think you like Sean Walker. I think he provided you what you needed. Uh, didn't really blow your doors off to the point where you feel like you have to bring him back, uh, especially with what he's likely going to cost. I imagine Sean Walker is gone. And there was a report this past week that Jack Johnson likely will not be returning to the Colorado Avalanche. I'm going to wait to see on that one. It's a relationship that really seems to work well. Jack Johnson's not going to cost you a lot. And you know what he's going to give you? He's arguably coming off his best season in his last five or seven seasons uh, this past year with the Avs. So I wouldn't be fully shocked to see them bring him back at the 11th hour on a league minimum deal. But as of right now, sounds like it's maybe trending towards that not being the case. Will Kale McCarr become the highest paid player next summer? It's very likely. Uh, look, he signed that contract. Kale McCarr signed the deal that he's on right now, and it was immediately uh, outdated. There were several other defensemen around the league, including the Edmonton Oilers' Darnell Nurse, who were given more money than Kale McCarr, both on the annual value and the overall uh, value of the deal. Uh, I don't think it is any secret what he means to this Avalanche team. Uh, he, he's the linchpin not only to the back end and the defense, but he's also one of the key, key drivers of offense from that back end. Uh, the Avs are going to give him whatever, whatever it, it, it takes to keep him here in Denver long term. And I do think that there is a possibility that, yes, we will be staring down at least one season of Kale McCarr being the NHL's highest paid player. A little bit more lighthearted one here. Who is your favorite Av to interview? And this is a tough one because if you asked me this last summer, my answer would have been Pavel Francouz. No doubt about it. He was absolutely fantastic to talk to in the, in the locker room every single time. Uh, on the record, off the record, he was just always happy to chat. He was one of the only guys uh, that I've met, you know, in pro sports. They're all very polite to us. You know, Miko Rantanen always comes in, says hello to everyone. If you chat with anyone, they always chat back. But Pavel Francouz always made a point to come in and say hello to everybody, including the media members. Uh, he was always just great. I love chatting with Andrew Cogliano. He's always got so much to say, very insightful. Uh, Miko Rantanen is always a joy to chat with. Um, th th there's a few guys in this room uh, that, that are great. Just, just always Casey Middlestat, another one that we got to talk to a lot at the end of the year. Ross Colton is always a pleasure to chat with. But my, my, my all-time answer is Pavel Franz. So as of right now, just a fantastic human being. Always great to chat with. Question I've had since last summer. Duchesne signing with the Abs seemed like it would have made a lot of sense, assuming both sides must have at least considered it. Which side was the one to say no to that reunion? Was it Duchesne not wanting to the abs? The abs not wanting Duchesne or both? Uh, look, I've looked into this a little bit uh, th th this past season because I'm with you. I thought Duchesne coming in and playing behind Nathan McKinnon as the Clear-cut second-line center made a lot of sense last summer, especially when you considered, hey, look, he was on a buyout. You figured it was probably going to be a short-term, smaller-money deal. I thought it made a lot of sense. The answer that I got throughout the year was that it was something that, that both sides kind of considered, said, hey, maybe this would make sense. Uh, you know, I believe Matt Duchesne still has a house here in Colorado. I, I think it would have made sense. I was told that relationship, it's, it's still just not – what you would want it to be to be entering into that type of agreement, having a player come back. I, I think maybe, as funny as it sounds to say, given how long ago it was at this point, it's maybe still just a little bit too fresh. The emotions are maybe still just a little bit too raw. Um, 
you know, we'll see. Matt Duchesne's going to be hitting the free agent market again this summer. He served as a great three seed for the Dallas Stars. Maybe it's something these two these two groups could circle back around to. Um, I was told that it was just the, the the relationship was just a little bit too strained when all of that ended. You know, I think a guy like Ryan O'Reilly that would have worked uh, had you know Nashville not thrown the money at him that they did. Um, but Matt Duchesne, I think that that. It just didn't really make sense for the two sides to be coming together, re-entering into that agreement, given everything in the past. Got a couple questions here. Uh, one, do the Avs need a Pat Maroon, Corey Perry type for the Dallas series? No. What the Avs need in that Dallas series was Val Nachushkin to be available. Uh, th this Avs team, they don't need those, you know, real... Uh, you know, sandpaper only type of guys. Look, Corey Perry can still be a serviceable player in the NHL. He, he, he produces, uh, you know, he can kind of be a sneaky guy there on like a second power play uh, or, or in your bottom six. Pat Maroon, I get it. People love him. Three straight Stanley Cups. Uh, you know, he, he, he's, he's mean. He's a great guy in the locker room. All of that is true. He's not super effective on the ice. Guys like Pat Maroon, uh, Curtis McDermott, Ryan Reeves, they don't see a ton of ice time in a really important moment, so really important games. That is not what the Avs were missing from that series with the Dallas Stars. Uh, another question here. Uh, with the cap going up, and let's say, let's hope, no lockout, how much will it help to have Nate signed long-term? Look, we already saw it with Nathan McKinnon's last deal. When that deal was signed, it was considered to be a big contract, a lot of money. By the time it ended, it was one of the best value deals, not only in the NHL, but in all of pro sports. Um, it's going to be important. Nathan McKinnon, he was the highest paid player in the league this last year. That is already not going to be true for this coming year. Salaries are going up. It's going to be massive to have guys like that signed long term. So you have some certainty on, on what those guys are going to cost you, and you're only gaining more additional uh, you know, money and flexibility against the salary cap. Is Jared Bednar the problem? I, no. I don't know how I could say this any more clear. Absolutely not. No, I, I don't even really know what problem you're referring to. They're two years removed from winning the Stanley Cup. They've been back to the playoffs each of the last two years. Last year, they even won their division. Uh, this year, they get to the second round. They lose to the team that won the Western Conference. Uh, no, there's no problem here with Jared Bednar. They're not moving on from him. Uh, with the endless coaching carousel that's going around the NHL, the Avs organization, I know they feel this way, and Avs fans should feel this way. Very grateful that there is a coach in place here that, that, that the team feels comfortable with keeping year over year. They like the culture he's established. They like the work ethic that he's established. And they like the system that he plays. And it has done nothing but breed results and, 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 and raise the expectations of the organization. That's nothing but a good thing. Jared Bednar is the furthest thing from a problem within this organization. This one here from my, my boy Montana, Mike. Always, always great friend, great follower, great supporter. Always love chatting with you, Mike. Uh, what are the chances of Val and the Abs reaching a mutual agreement where Val goes home to the KHL? I, truthfully, I, I don't know. I think this is a possibility. Uh, I, I've been told that Val has gone back to Russia for the summer. Uh, there were reports, you know, last week about him playing in a it's, – it's a rec league, you know, there in the summer, a summer uh, men's rec league, uh, you know, with some other pros and media members and stuff like that. That. But I've been told he has gone back. Uh, and that, you know, I'm sure there are some KHL teams that would love to have Val Nachushkin. Um, I think that's a large decision that he would have to make with his family, you know, that they would want to be back in Russia full time. Um, and then at that point, yes, you know, we've seen stuff before. Either Kovalchuk comes to mind as the last real big, big name to do something like this, just says, hey, look. I think I would rather go home, just play hockey there, be close to family, be close to friends. Let's just terminate this contract and each go our separate ways. I, I'm not going to say that's a zero. You know, I'm not going to say it's a zero percent chance that happens. Yes, Val Nichus is going to be walking away from a lot of money, but you know there would be KHL money offered to him immediately. Um, so, you know, it, it's really going to come down to what Val thinks is best for him. Does he want to continue to go through this process with the player assistance program and having to take these tests and knowing that if he fails one more, it's a one-year suspension. And, and his time in the NHL, it might be decided for him that he's done. He's going to have to decide that uh, if that's what he wants, but I'm definitely putting that at a non-zero chance that Val Nishushin could just say, hey, look, 
you know what, I, I don't want to deal with this. It's too much stress on me, on my family. I want to just be able to play hockey the way that I want to play hockey, and I'm going to go home and do that. So um, I'm not going to say that it's a 0% chance. Last one from my guy, Arif, here. Uh, when are we doing another podcast together? Are you free next week? Next Monday or Friday, Arif, if you're watching this, like, come do a show with us. That would be fun. That's that's it. All right, guys, that's all we got this week. Uh, another mailbag coming back to you guys next week. We are inching closer and closer to the draft. We will be in Vegas covering all that for you guys here in two weeks. Uh, but draft, then free agency is right after that. Uh, this is the fun part of the offseason. We got the Stanley Cup going to uh, Stanley Cup final going tonight. Panthers up 2 nothing in that one. Looking forward to, uh, to watching that game tonight. It's been a fun couple games so far. Things are heating up here on the offseason front. Keep your questions coming. We'll talk to you guys next week.